have it shown up. Well, oh. We've got a draftee there. Mike is the draftee. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're right here. All right, great, thank you. Good morning.
Welcome to worship on this Sunday in which we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. I thought it was kind of a dreary winter morning, but I was corrected not only once but twice, and it's actually a beautiful morning, so never mind. We'll hope that the sun does maybe shine a little bit this afternoon. But again, thank you very much for being here. I'm Pastor Dan Sire, retired, gosh, almost a year and a half now from having served St. John Village of Maine for 14 years. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I appreciate all of you folks being here as well. We'll save the announcements for the end of the service, but just a couple of things. We are going today, for the first time in about three years, as I understand it, begin taking communion uh, up front. So, uh, but having said that, there still is the option, if you desire, to remain in your seat with the individual cups, that's certainly fine. And when we get to that point in the liturgy, I'll talk us all through that. So having said that, if you desire to remain in your seat with the individual cups for communion, again, just fine, then you will probably need that individual cup. And if you desire that and don't have it, raise your hand. The ushers are ready to provide that for you right now. Well, again, thank you for being here, and we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness, and I invite you all to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another with the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated because I'm an old man. I like to sit a lot. So. <laughs> we'll continue our worship service with the Kyrie, which you'll find on page 147 of your red hymnals. And we'll sing that Kyrie responsibly, and that will be followed by a singing of This is the Feast, which we will all sing communally, communally together. Any questions? In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. They all were baptized into Christ, faithful to their calling, to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we continue our worship with the reading of God's Word. A reading from Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 23 responsibly. <laughs> preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
how we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's take a closer look 
at the baptism that Jesus performs performs in his ministry, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And as we do that, I guess a logical place to start is by beginning to try to define the Holy Spirit. However, as a caveat, and not as a cop-out, but as a bit of a caveat, I have to say at the outset that the Holy Spirit remains undefinable, as does any ultimate understanding of God. Because after all, we're talking about God, and we try to do that with our definitely finite, in my case, weak little brain. So we never can totally comprehend God and the Holy Spirit. But I'm okay with that, because I think that in Christian theological pursuits of understanding, we ought to do a little closer mirroring of our ancestors' Jewish approach to theology, in which questions are more valued than answers. I was reading a quote from some famous rabbi, I can't remember his name, but he was talking about the fact when he was a kid, and he'd come home from school. Well, when I was a kid, I came home from school. My mother would always ask, well, what did you learn today? Ever happened to you? Is that what your mother asked you? Well, in this rabbi's case, when he came home from school, his mother would ask, did you ask a good question today? A little different approach. Nevertheless, as Western Christians, we still crave answers. We still crave specific answers and definitions, and in this case, we crave a specific definition of such concepts as the Holy Spirit. And we often define, in my experience, the Holy Spirit in this case, and mistakenly so, in my opinion, as some magical ephemera that flits around the peripheries of our lives, taking occasional dips in and out to do miraculous and magical things. But I kind of struggle with that concept. Yet, as pastors, we perpetuate that understanding. I don't know how many times I've heard a pastor talk to me, especially about to, their relationship with the congregation, saying that the, the Holy Spirit called me to serve that congregation. Okay, then why did they fire you six months after you got there? <laughs> Apparently sometimes the Holy Spirit's not a very good recruiter, I'm guessing I don't know. Or we might claim that in response to our prayers, the Holy Spirit healed, I don't know, my brother. <coughs> okay. But I prayed too, and the Holy Spirit didn't heal my brother. So the Holy Spirit likes you better than me? What's going on? I don't know that I necessarily understand that. So if indeed the Holy Spirit, as we too often, I think, mistakenly identify, if the Holy Spirit is the bearer of some sort of magic, then as I have observed, and experienced in my 71, almost 72 years, the Holy Spirit is either a lousy magician or a capricious jerk. <laughs> maybe, maybe we ought to take a look at the Holy Spirit from a different perspective. Maybe. You don't have to, but play along with me. And maybe we can begin by referring to the Greek, as Andy did in his wonderful message from last week that Tim read. So if you weren't here, shame on you. It was good, and he talked about, uh, he referred to the, uh, the Greek translation. And I'm going to do the same thing, because Greek is the original language of the New Testament. So if you want to get to the source, the basics, the foundation, then you look at the language in which it was written, not one of the five billion translations that are out there of the original Greek. And in the original Greek language, the word for spirit is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma. Pneuma is also the Greek word for wind. Same exact word, two different meanings. And interestingly, in the stories of both the New and the Old Testament, the spirit and wind are often 
interchangeable. Like the story from Acts when Luke writes, when the day of Pentecost has come, and that was the day that Spirit came upon the disciples. They were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. An interconnection between Spirit and wind. So maybe we can, again, humor me. This morning, take a look as the, of the whole, at the Holy Spirit as possibly the holy wind. The holy wind which, as in many of Jesus' farming analogies, separates the wheat from the chaff. Imagine aged people uh, harvesting wheat, and then they thresh it again by banging it on rocks to kind of begin to separate things, and they put up these big nets, and they throw it up into the air, waiting for the wind to catch the chaff, and blow it away, and they do that repeatedly until they finally end up with the essence, with the kernels of wheat. And they allow the wind to separate the wheat from the chaff. And I submit to you this morning that likewise, very possibly, the Holy Spirit is the holy wind of God that blows into your life separating your wheat, the essence of who you are, that which matters most from all the chaff, all the junk, all the distractions, all the stuff that fills your life with things that necessarily maybe are not that important. So maybe, maybe that's a viable way, an alternate way to see the Holy Spirit as the holy wind that blows into your life through the ministry of Jesus Christ. Okay, pardon me. And then there's the fire. What's the fire about? Well, usually we associate fire with fire and brimstone, and that fire that will send those sinners to the place they need to go. The only problem with that is that we're all sinners, so I don't know how that concept necessarily works out so well. But I'm going to submit to you again this morning that maybe the fire is the aspect of God's love for you that gets rid of all the chaff that is separated by the holy wind. As you can imagine, if you're in the process of threshing that wheat and allowing the wind to blow the chaff away, the wind, as Jesus is quoted as saying, who knows where it comes from or where it goes. It may have curious directions. It may blow some of that chaff back into your life again and disturb and pollute the whole refining process. So what do you do? Maybe it'd be neat if there was some sort of way to get rid permanently of all that chaff, all that stuff, all that junk that is in your life. Maybe fire would do that. I remember I grew up on a farm in eastern Montana, long, 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 long time ago. And uh, that was, we had a combine, a harvester, a combine harvester with no calves. That was before calves, harvesting pre calves. And so if you happened to be driving the combine and had a big tailwind at that particular direction, then all that shaft that would come out of the back end of the machine would come swirling around you and fill every pore of your body and choke you. <laughs> Man, if there was some sort of neat device that as that stuff came out the back of the combine, a flame would come out, blow it all away, burn it all up. Inherently very dangerous operation for sure, but that chaff would be gone forever. So maybe, maybe we can see that as part of this baptism by Holy Spirit and fire, where Jesus provides that burst of flame that ultimately and permanently burns away all that chaff that has been separated by the Holy Wind. So, my conclusion thus far is that Jesus' baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire is the process, and it is an ongoing process, just like our walk of faith is not a one-time deal. It's an ongoing process that can permanently get rid of all the junk in your life, leaving you with 
what matters most in your life, what matters most in the world, leaving you with the whole real you. Okay. Well, if you're with me so far, then, we still have an unresolved question, which we posed at the very beginning, and that is why we then bother with baptism by water. Jesus didn't baptize with water. Why do we? Well, let's look again at Matthew's text this morning, and we see that one of the reasons that Jesus or that John, rather, was baptizing Jesus with water was a preparation for his ministry. Not only a preparation for Jesus, but a preparation for us to accept and to live into the fullness of that ministry. A preparation for Jesus' baptism by the Holy Spirit and fire. The early disciples did it. We continue to do it as well. So we baptize with water as a means of grace, opening our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the promises and possibilities of God revealed in Jesus Christ. And not only do we baptize with water, but we are called to remember our baptism. Specifically, Martin Luther calls us to remember our baptism. Not to be confused with Martin Luther King Jr. I had to spend like at least one session of confirmation class explaining to the kids the difference between the black guy that lived 60 years ago and the white guy that lived 500 years ago. Not the same guy. However, there is an inextricable link between the two. How much time we got? Uh, how many of you know the story of how Martin Luther King Jr. got his name? Raise your hand. Not very many people. You know, you can check your text while I'm going to tell the story again. So, Martin Luther King Jr. was born Michael King Jr. to Michael King who was a Baptist minister in Atlanta, Georgia, served Ebenezer Baptist Church for over 40 years. And when his son, Michael King Jr., was just five years old, the Reverend Michael King ended up attending an international theological conference in Berlin, Germany. And while he was there, they had an opportunity to visit some of the sites in Lutherland, like go to Wittenberg and some other places like that. And Reverend uh, Michael King, who was certainly aware of Martin Luther, learned much more about him than he ever knew and was just enthralled with not only the man, but with his theology of grace. So enthralled, so enamored, so impressed that when he came back to the States, he legally changed his name from Michael King to Martin Luther King and had his sons name changed from Michael King Jr. to Martin Luther King Jr. True story. So, okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, Martin Luther encourages us to remember our baptism every day. So what does that do for us? A couple of things. Again, it helps us remember the preparation for the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in fire in Jesus Christ. It helps us hopefully remember that. And it also hopefully helps us remember the commitments that were made for us by others at baptism and the commitments that we made for ourselves when we affirmed our baptisms at confirmation. Commitments that I'm sure you most assuredly remember, right? I mean, you made them before your fellows in Christ. You made them before your Lord. You remember them, right? To live among God's faithful people. That's a commitment you did, that you made. Maybe it would help to remember that every day. To hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper. That's a commitment that was made for you and that you made in your confirmation. Apparently, most folks didn't get that message this morning, apparently. 
To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and through deed. Do you remember that commandment? To serve all people following the example of Jesus. Do you remember that commandment? To strive for justice and peace in all the earth. How's that going for you? Do you remember that commandment? And it's important for us to remember those commitments and to act upon them, not just to fulfill some sort of theological obligation. But it's important for us, as Matthew reminds us this morning, to prepare ourselves to open our hearts and our minds to the transformative power of Jesus Christ. Grace is great, but you've got to respond to grace. Being an innocent bystander in your walk of faith is not conducive to living fully in the transformative power of God in Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, brother. It's true. That's what this business is all about. It's not just some way to while away a few hours on a Sunday morning because you've got nothing else to do. Or you want to see some old friends or drink a cup of coffee because you really like that church coffee. The ultimate, the ultimate power and authority and understanding and meaning of God's message to you through holy baptism and fire or Holy Spirit and fire is transformation where you are living a life among your faithful peers. Living a life where you come on a regular basis to hear the word and to participate in the Lord's Supper. To live a life in which you strive for justice and peace. To live a life in which you understand God's message through Jesus and live that out in word and in deed. Bottom line, I think what Matthew is telling us this morning and what I'm trying to tell you in my rather inadequate way is that in Jesus' baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire, he comes into our life with a refining process of transformation, uncovering and revealing that which matters most in the world, that which matters most in your life, and reveals the whole and in our ongoing quest for living in the fullness of that transformative power, we remember our baptisms. We remember and live into the commitment of our baptism by water. And I think that's Matthew's message for us today. Any questions? Well, having heard no questions, we'll sing our hymn of the day, which is 305 in your red hymnals, and you remain seated as we sing when Jesus came to Jordan. <laughs>
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
few moments to share the piece with those around you.
in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is prepared, and all are welcome. You may be seated. So, I guess, since we haven't done this for about three years, it's been a while for me, too, a little logistical explanation is probably in order. I'll be serving the bread. Tim will be serving the wine or the grape juice, which are in the trays. If you request gluten-free wafers, you may do so. We have those available. So we're going to be starting ushers on this side. I'll be here with the bread. Tim will be there with the wine. You come up, get the bread from me, get your wine or grape juice from Tim, put your empty in the tray, and walk around back to your seat. And then we'll switch sides. Tim and I will switch places, and somebody turned off my sound. This is not a sign. This is not a good sign. There, it's back. It's back. Help me, Jesus. Okay, so that's what we'll do. And, again, if you are taking your communion by the individual meal, we'll begin with that. And when we've concluded that, then I'll invite you to come forward. Now, the one thing we're going to be doing a little bit differently this morning, since this is the Sunday when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, as you come forward, you may, if you wish, certainly not necessary, but if you wish, you may dip your hands in the water of the font, Cross yourself and know that's not just a Catholic thing. Lutherans do it too before you come up to communion. And I don't know what happened to my microphone, but that's okay. I'll just talk to you loud. You won't need to hear me during communion. Anyway, here we go. So, any questions about that? All right, so we'll begin on this side. And again, the meal is prepared in all of our. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Boy, this is a lot. This is complicated. <laughs> I ask you, as you come forward, because I don't know whether you're taking communion or not, old, young, whatever, if you're accepting the elements as you come forward, extend your hands to receive the elements. If not, fold your hands to your heart to receive a blessing. And now, again, the meal is prepared and all are welcome. Mm -hmm.
body of Christ given for you. 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 explanation. I forgot the people with the individual cups. So, if you haven't already taken your communion, those of you who have individual cups, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and, bring, and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Tim has some announcements to share. We're going to do that after that. Oh, that's right. See, I didn't yeah, see <laughs> All right. As you remain standing, we will sing our sending hymn 310 in the red hymn.
your communication card. If you haven't filled that out, go ahead and fill that out and drop that off on your way out. Um, we got an announcement um, insert, chock full of things, a couple of notes. Um, do need to announce January 22nd, two weeks from today, is our annual meeting. Please plan to attend that. Um, annual reports are on the table outside Angie's office if you'd like to pick one of those up on your way out. Um, I was told offering envelopes that you expect to get mailed to you are a bit delayed, but they are on their way. So if you're waiting for those, um, those are on their way. Adult Forum will be meeting this morning. Yes. Go uh, I invite all of you to come to Adult Forum, but the topic in the bulletin is not the one we're going to be discussing. We're going to be talking about the deadly storm in Buffalo and how it applies to us. So okay. please come. Storm in Buffalo. All right, thank you, and thank you for leading that, Chris. Uh, music Ministries uh, begin again, uh, rehearsals this week. Um, I just have a question. It says, at all fire on Wednesday at 6.30, we traditionally have 7? Uh, no, 6 and 7. 6 o'clock, strings, 7 o'clock, quiet. Okay, so if you are in those groups, or if you want to join those groups, come here at those times. Uh, the cats. Uh, shelf is very full. If you um, today's the last day of the collection for that. If you wanted to donate and you didn't, I'm sure there's a place you could uh, drop some cash off to uh, to help also supply those needs. Right? Yes. You take cash? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you wanted to participate, um, that will be uh, picked up this week. Uh, poinsettia plants. If you had uh, donated one and want to take that home today, uh, please do. If you want to take one to somebody or your own home. There are a few left here, probably are going to be cleaned up this week. That's all I've got. Anybody have anything else that I missed? Just one thing. The noisy offering this month is going towards um, a match challenge by our Corks and Covers group. Um, during the uh, bake sale, they earned about 160 some dollars, and they want to challenge you to help the women's community. Uh, their budgets have been slashed by over $100,000, and they are looking at a really, really hard time ahead. So when you are plugging that noisy um, offering, that's where it's going this month. So thank you for that, and think of that with generosity. Thank you. Centered in Christ, Good Shepherd will gather in blessings, grow in purpose, go with passion. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.